Today's lesson is going to be the oral cavity and the oral cavity starts from the inner surface of the lips until we reach the oral pharyngeal isthmus. It consists of two parts. The first part is the smaller compartment and it's called the outer part which is the vestibule. And the vestibule starts from the inner surface of the lips until the anterior surfaces of the teeth. While the second part, it's going to be called also the inner part or the oral cavity proper. And it uh, starts from the internal surface of the teeth until we reach the oropharyngeal isthmus. Talking about the vestibule, it's a slit-like space between the lips and the cheeks. Externally, and the teeth and the gums internally. And it is limited above and below by the reflection of the mucous membrane from the alveolar processes onto the cheek and the lip. This gutter reflection is called the sulcus. So we have two sulcuses, two sulci, I mean, the upper sulci and the lower sulci. Talking about the frenums, which are mucous membrane folds, one upper and one lower in uh, the midline, which is called the labial frenum, and it is related to the central teeth, the upper and the lower. And we have another two upper and two lower buccal frenums, and they are related to the premolar regions. The only communication between the vestibule and the oral cavity proper is found only just behind the last molar in the upper and the lower areas. That means it's behind the retromolar pads. Boundaries of the oral cavity proper. Anteriorly, the posterior lingual surfaces of the upper and the lower teeth, while posteriorly it's going to be the oropharyngeal isthmus. The roof, we have it over here, is the palate, the hard and the soft palate. And it will separate the oral cavity from the nasal cavity. The floor is formed by the mylohyoid muscle, which is this one, and occupied mainly by the tongue. Boundaries of the oropharyngeal isthmus area. We have it from above, the soft palate, and from below, it's going to be the back of the tongue. From the sides, we can see them from this here. There are two folds of palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal arches. The palatoglossal arch contains the palatoglossus muscle and runs from the soft palate towards the sides of the tongue. So there will be two palatoglossus arches, one to the right and one to the left. While the palatopharyngeal arch contains the palatopharyngeus muscle and runs from the soft palate to merge with the lateral wall of the pharynx. In between the two arches will be the tonsillar fossa. That contains the palatine tonsils. Talking about the heart palate, it's composed of the palatine process of the maxilla, and the horizontal plates of the palatine bone. You can find the following on the osteology of the heart palate. The incisive foramen or incisive fossa, the median palatine suture, the horizontal palatine suture, greater palatine foramen and lesser palatine foramina. They are found here. They are multiple in numbers. For the incisive fossa, foramen, the soft tissue that bulges over it is called the incisive papilla. The foramen will transmit the nasopalatine nerve and the greater palatine vessels. And these greater palatine vessels and the incisive papillae will be a little bit away from the lingual surface of the central incisors, of the maxillary central incisors, around one centimeters away in the midline. For the greater palatine foramen, it's located one centimeter toward the palatine midline 
just a little bit distal to the last molar and it will transmit the greater palatine, nerve and vessels. For the lesser palatine foramina, it transmits the lesser palatine, nerve and vessels for the soft palate in this region. Over the midline, the mid-medium palatine uh, suture, it will be covered by the palatine raphe. It's in the midline and extending backwards from the incisive papilla and covering the median palatine suture as we've mentioned. This is the soft tissue compartment. Over here is the incisive papilla that's covering the incisive fossa, the median palatine raphe or the palatine raphe that covers the median palatine suture and horizontally extending from the median palatine uh, raphe or the, the, or the palatine raphe and a little bit posterior from the incisive papilla here are the rugae. There are just horizontal lines extending from there. Now, talking about the heart palate sub nerve supply, it's supplied by the greater palatine nerve starting from the last molar maxillary molar area and then it comes out from the greater palatine until it reaches the canine area and there it will end. Here it supplies it with the sensory innervation to the palatal mucosa only, not to the teeth. As you know, to the teeth it is the posterior superior alveolar and the middle superior alveolar and the anterior superior alveolar nerves. Nasopalatine nerve and from here the nasopalatine is considered as a branch from the maxillary nerve that arises from the pterygopalatine ganglion and then it provides sensory innervation to the mucosa that is related to the central, lateral and here it will anastomose with the greater palatine to serve the area of the canine also. So, this region is called the premaxilla. So, the premaxillar area, premaxillary area is supplied by the nasopalatine nerve. From the canine area to the posterior, the mucosa here is supplied by the greater palatine. Talking about the blood supply, the whole heart palate is supplied by the greater palatine artery and veins, which are branches of the maxillary artery coming from the pterygopalatine fossa to supply the whole heart palate and then it will move into the incisive foramen and rise up toward the nasal cavity and there it will supply a small area of the mucous membrane within the nasal, within the nasal cavity. I hope this video was beneficial for everyone. If you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.